this week, I think, this week, yes, um, I, I, I called one of my, my staff um, uh, and uh, uh, I wanted to make an appointment with her. She said, okay, uh, when do you want to make the appointment? On such and such a day. But I don't seem to have time. If you saw me the way I look, you will know that you need to make the appointment very soon. And then I said, how do you look? She told me I am expectant. But this is a girl who has had no child for more than almost eight years. But the joy I felt myself, it was like I am the owner of the what? Of the baby. But I am actually not. But you know, when you, when you, ex, when you see somebody who has stayed and overcome, the joy that comes is not for that person only. It is infectious. That's why the Bible says here that he will be a value to many who reconcile parents to their children. When we stay on course, that's what actually happens. When um, Nelson Mandela stayed in the prison, by the way, he was even given the opportunity to denounce his fight and be released. But he said, no, until the reason that took me in the prison is resolved, I will not get out, even if you open the gates. But the value out of Nelson Mandela's staying power was not even to him. My brother, my sister, when you stay in course, the beneficiaries are not necessarily you. The benefit we see here is not necessarily to Zachariah and Elizabeth. The community around us benefits when we actually stay on course. The community benefits. My brother, my sister, I want to encourage you. At what point are you in life when you feel like drifting? At what point are you in life when you feel like what? Going off course. I want to encourage you to stay on course. There are people in church here, by the way, who are my inspiration. I don't know whether they are here. Mama Jackie, is she around? She's not around. Um, Teddy, Mama Teddy, she's not around. But you know these people. In it, these people have been here when, as far as I was in school. Eh? Almost 20 years. Uh, they have been here I have seen them and I say, my dear, I must also remain on course because I see some people who have been very steadfast. Your steadfast is a testament and encouragement to many. And that's how we can actually encourage one another. Praise the Lord. The blessing found in Jack, by the way, for you, the Bible says in verse 8, I think the verse 8, Your breakthrough as you stay on course must find you on duty. Eh? Must find you on what? On duty. You see, Zachariah was found on what? On duty. Okay? So, so it was that while he was serving as a priest before God in the order of his Division. Where he was what? He was serving. Now, I, 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 I tell you that being able to remain on course is easier when you are actually in service. Because when you are actually out of service, you are of what? No value. Zachariah was actually able to maintain himself on course because he was in what? In service. I want to encourage all of us here. Find something to do in the church. Find something to do in your community. Find something to do because that which you do in your community for people in the church is what will sustain you. Interestingly, God wants to Deal with people and solve problems of people who are in active service. 
This is what we see here. So I'm, I'm going a bit slow and hopefully that we are able to understand. Okay? So God needs to find us in service in order for us to be able to be uh, God for him to intervene. We must maintain ourselves in service in order to remain on course. Keeping service to God sustains your calling and maintains your spirit and focus. It maintains your spirit and what? It actually preserves you where you will be interacting with a different ecosystem which actually uh, diverts you or induces you with a different stimuli. This one in service will be able to maintain you and give you the inspiration in order for you to have continuous power. That's why for you to win a race, you must always practice. Practice, practice. However talented you are, if you do not practice, you can never win a race. You can never. You can never win a race. However talented you are, it's not possible. So talent is not enough. My brother, my sister, your talent is what? It's not enough. Because this person, Zachariah, was more than blessed. Even acknowledged as being righteous and blameless. What more he would have said? That's enough. But even when he was blessed, he had to maintain himself in what? In service. My brother, my sister, what are you using to maintain yourself? When you stay on course, the final outcome will bring joy to you and all those around you. I've already said this. The final outcome is not only for you, because we already see what happens here, that the son was a blessing to the community. He was the one to bring people back to God. And we see already what John was able to do. John was able to bring back the people of Israel to God. That's verse 16. He was also able to reconcile parents with the children. I think which we've already uh, read about. Um, and as such, as a church, one of the things I've realized is that we think that there are principles that we, we can ignore as Christians, yet like I've already said, all truth is parallel. The same principles the people of the world use. Today I came, very early in the morning, I found a woman who had laid by the roadside her merchandise, shoes, at seven. At what? Now forget about she's doing it on Sunday. Don't, don't bring in those other discussions because you missed the point. Okay? By seven, I imagine she did it even much earlier. Her merchandise was already laid. And I can tell you there were more than three customers standing there. By seven. By seven. So the Christian, how do you, ex how do you demonstrate your prudence in that for which you have been entrusted? How? Sometimes we, we play around. Sometimes we play around. But this person has displayed merchandise by seven. I said, ah, this is a lesson for me. The same principles this lady is using, if a Christian uses them, you will be successful. You do not have to give up because as soon as you give up, your blessing is about to happen. Final thoughts because I think our time seems to be flying very fast. One, there is a price for staying on course. When you stay on course, suddenly there is a price. Paul says that I express on steadfastly for the price and the goal that is set before me. It means when you stay on course, you will certainly receive a price.
The other thing, of course, is that the devil will certainly celebrate you if you go off course. You will be celebrated for going of what? Of course. The other thing is that many start the race, but few finish. Now, what maintains people is to make sure that we actually have a sufficient discipline to be able to stay on course. The other most important thing for us to know is that there's no permanent condition. There's no permanent condition. Zacharias' condition was not what? Permanent. The Bible says here that Elizabeth was what? Barren. My brother, my sister, whatever you are going through now, that condition is not permanent. I want to encourage you, do not give up because the world is waiting to laugh at us. You know that? They want to say, mm-hmm, save D. Mm-hmm, even in Lokore. Mm-hmm, they used to say, mm -hmm. you understand? The world is, is watching us. The world is watching us, looking at a point when they can actually scorn us. But I want to encourage you, my brother, there is no condition which is permanent. There's no condition which is permanent. But that point which you are actually experiencing, you must start to think about it. You must start to reflect on it. You must find your own staying power. If it means staying back a bit, stay. Normally when the ship is at the seas and the storm is ravaging, what happens? They anchor. They do what? My brother, if it means you anchor, anchor until the storm is what? It's over. Anchor until the storm is what? It's over. But the truth is there is no condition that is what? Permanent. The Bible also says that God knows the plans for us, of course. The plan is um, Jeremiah 29, 11. You know that very well. But what is most important is that stay in the course um, helps us to live life without regrets. Friends, let me tell you, life with regrets is very, very painful. If there is an area where most of us have been beaten, is an area where there are regrets. And every one of us has had regrets at some point. Maybe you are meant to make a decision. Maybe you are meant to take um, a certain course of action. Maybe you were midway in your studies and you, you know you broke off or you fell off for one reason or the other. But let me tell you, a life of regrets is very painful and very devastating. It takes the grace of God to actually mend a spirit that has regrets. A person with regrets in their lives, they are very, very difficult to encourage. Because regrets have a, a tendency for recurring, recurring, recurring reminders to people. It takes the grace of God to wash it away. Sometimes the biggest part in our lives is even for us to forgive ourselves. That's the hardest part. Just as the hardest person to tame is you. The hardest person to tame is who? Yeah. The hardest person to tame is me, Vincent. Likewise, if I have regrets, the hardest person to let go of the regrets I've had is me. It is hard. So, when we stay on course, we are able to actually live a life without regrets. But when you actually... Go, of course, you say, I wish I had stayed a little longer. By the way, what he's doing now is what I was supposed to do. He's a medical doctor. You see that guy, I was the best in the class. You understand? So, living a life of regress is very difficult and very painful. The Bible says, uh, uh, broken spirit, who can do what? Who can, who, can, who can stand or who can mend or something like that? Hmm? Huh? Who can do what? Something like that. It's very difficult. So, um, 
I know that there are many of us who have had many difficult times. I want to encourage all of us to stay on course. Finally, from this we see that when you stay on course, certainly it brings joy to yourself and to those around you. Friends, brethren, let's stay on course. Let's protect our faith because our faith is now being challenged more than ever before. I was reminded in the course of the week when we just got saved, my father had a discussion. I've said this story maybe for some of you remember with an old man in the village. And he said, la, 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 la. But my father made a statement even when he was not saved. He said, Na yewa mwana wa aloko ka. Nga cha aloko sa Nga wa achitibwa nyo. Bwa aloko ka nga cha aloko sa achitegeza. Nga wa achitibwa nyo. Meaning that even if he was not subscribing to that, he knew the value of being saved. So my brother, my sister, I want to encourage you that that which we believed and accepted is such a, pre a treasure. It is such a treasure. Sometimes when we are out there, you lose focus here and there and you feel like you are like any other person. But I want to encourage you that we are not the same. We were bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ and that alone makes a difference. Sometimes when you see people overtaking you, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep trying. Don't give up on your race. Keep trying. Because, let me tell you, victory and the prize is for only those who stay the course. You can't say that I led in the first round, in the second round I led. No, that is not important. What is important is have you been able to consistent stay on course until the final map, lap. Staying on course helps us to realize our full purpose in life. When you stay on course, you are able to appreciate how God created you uniquely and the reason for which you were created. But there are many of us who have not been able to see our purpose yet in life. But I want to encourage you, my brother, that all of us who are here, there is a reason, at least one or two, as to why God created you. And it's only if we stay on course, then will you be able to realize your full purpose in life. Some people's purposes in life is just to be an encouragement to others. And that's all. I know all of us want to be rich, but I am sure not all of us will be rich. Because even Jesus said, the one who's in need will still be among you. Hmm? Eh? Yes. But the reason is, when you realize your purpose in life, it is able to sustain you and bring you satisfaction. When you realize your purpose in life, you stop to be driven by the things around you. When you realize your purpose in life, you start to have a clear direction. By the way, you can sustain your spirit because you know your purpose in life. I want to pray that all of us, God will give us an opportunity to understand that we are in a race and that if there is anybody who is a target, it is me, it is you. But when we stay on course, we will be in position to realize our purpose in life. We will bring joy to ourselves and to those around us. God bless you so much. Thank you.